Okay, I thought I'd just do a little bit of an updated video on crimping. Um, first thing I'll talk about is the tool. This is this is the crimping tool I use. Um, which you can see, it's a 0.08 to 1 mil, which gives us AWG, which is a wire 28 to 18. Uh, good solid metal metal teeth you can get these with with removable grips which uh, gives you a bit more a bit more flexibility so that's the, that's the crimper um i use two sets of um two sets of connectors one is a jst sm and these are these style here these are great for connecting power they just clip together they, they all come in different sort of formats. This is the two pin to two pin, but you can get multiple ones or whatever. So, um, and they come with their associated pins, male and female. Um, and then on the other side, I use the standard DuPont connectors, um, which are these, which are very similar to what you see in the, um, in the Arduinos. Um, and their housings tend to look just like that so there's only one but you can put male and female pins and you can connect them together um the wire i'm using is this this is uh 26 um awg awg is the thickness um and the higher the number the thinner the wire um so this is just standard what i would say is 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 standard servo cable okay so what i'll do first of all is just crimp um i'll crimp a standard dupont so the first thing is you grab your individual uh crimpers i tend and i'm trying to do this through video so it's quite interesting i tend to cut the end off like that and then what i do is just pop the side cutter just to the edge and cut that piece off like that now Typically, when you got these um, first, the opening, which is that little bit on the end there, is quite wide. So what you can do with a pair of pliers is just squeeze it together a little bit so it fits in the jaws easier. When I'm doing it, you know, on speed, I do tend to use my teeth. Wouldn't recommend it. Um, so the the next thing really now is to fit this into into here. Um, now, if you look inside the teeth, you'll see there's two levels. Um, there's kind of a, I'll see if I can just zoom in a little bit on that. There we go. So there's a, a, a slightly narrower and a slightly wider. What you want to do is get the put, the, put the teeth in there. And as you slide them along that channel, those two little teeth that are stuck out, actually catch against that where it gets a little bit narrower so the narrower side is where you're actually crimping the end where the pointy end is and the other side is more for the cable so what i do then is i just just bring it in on a ratchet just so you've what you've not done is squashed it but what you've done is got a hold of that quite firmly you then take your cable um, this one is just stripped back a couple of mil um, i would say that uh, i tend to Strip these again with teeth, not wouldn't recommend it. Use a pair of pliers. And what you want to do is just push that into the hole where you've got that cable. And you, you get used to it by experience, but you want to put it in just so that the insulation is just inside. Tighten it, release it. And what you end up with is a crimped cable, which you kind of want a bit like that. So what that's got is it's got it's got the metal side, and it's really small, but hopefully you can see the video. The metal side is in this second part of the crimp, and the, the cable is in this part of the crimp. And so it's nicely crimped, and that's, that's a pretty, or it's a very solid connection. The next part, once you've crimped all of your cables, and I'm not just going to go through the same thing over again, because that would be boring, is putting them in the housing. So in the housing, you've got smaller ends, and you've got larger ends. We'll just have a look at, sorry. Well, you've got larger ends on this side and you've got smaller ends at this side. And the way these things work is if you look on the actual cable there, you can see, might be against a black background, you can see that little block, little square block in the middle. Um, when you push it in, it goes in and that little square block clicks underneath that plastic pin there and that's when it is fully inserted and lodged in. Now, so you push it in and you do that. Now, what tends to happen with crimpers is the last little bit of crimping there 
is a little bit too wide for the block. There's a couple of things you can do. You can literally get a pair of pliers on this side or your fingers and you can pull it in, which will just push that in, into that cable. What I tend to do is put it put it in as far as it'll go. Don't push it in too hard. And then take, take, the, take a pair of pliers, or in this case I'm using cutters, probably not the best bet. Just give it a gentle squeeze. And all you're really doing is taking a little bit of the width off it. And then when you push it in, it just goes in and you heard it, hopefully heard it click. And that's pretty much it really for crimping. It's, it's that simple, but again, it's experimenting as you, um, as you, as you go through on how you actually uh, do that. So uh, <clears throat> I'll just do one on the, um, uh, the uh, other ones, which is the JST SMs. So again, you use a wire stripper or your teeth, just strip back a wire a little bit so you can so you've got a bit of wire showing. Cable showing like that. Select your particular end. In this case, I'll use a I'll use a male. Snip it. Again, it's slightly different this time, but I'm snipping that and then just removing that last little bit there. And what you end up with is just this. Same as before, they tend to be a little bit too wide. So we just grab the little uh, pliers and squeeze them in. And then take your, take these, push it in, same same place. Um, wait, get them teeth in, but just so that they catch on that wide a bit. And then gradually squeeze it in so it just holds it in place. And then once you've got it held in place, take your wire, make sure the ends are fairly clear. And what you want to do is just push that wire in just so that the insulation goes inside them jaw bits. Squeeze it, and there we go. We have a we have a crimp. What can happen is, is if the wire is a little bit long, you can see the little bit of wire tufting out. Don't worry about that because that will just disappear inside the inside the connector. Now on these connectors, these are a little bit different. Um, what you've actually got on on the JSTs is if you can get the damn thing in focus you've got a little tiny thing that sticks up a little tiny latch that sticks up on there which hopefully you can see that's that little sharp bit the, the other this other side is just wire that's stuck through but that latch so on the on these on this side of the connector that latch goes on the same side that this latch is here and it just pops into there um, you push it in from the bottom at a slight angle upwards and what it'll do is it'll put, protrude out the back. Now what I tend to do then is I, I tend to use a pair of pliers. Again, I wouldn't use snipes normally, but, I could, but they're just a hand. And I just pull it through until you kind of hear it click. And then once it's clicked, there's a little bit of looseness that's in there. And, um, and so that, that's then crimped in. And again, what you do is do the same thing. Now on the other side of the connector which is which is this side what you've actually got is you've got a little window so that little um latch that i showed you that was on the cable you put that the window side and then you push the pins through that hole till it gets into that window and again you can pull it through a little bit um on the female side i tend to just uh, maybe push it through but really if you get it in going in it tends to go in at an angle it clicks in and then that's done. And that's pretty much it for, for crimping. Um, I would really rec incredibly recommend getting hold of a set of these tools. Uh, they're so useful, um, they're so handy. And it means that what you can do is you can put more solid connectors on, you can add custom servo cable lengths. So you can literally create something that is, you know, you can assemble it and you can disassemble it and you can get in for maintenance. And it is, it is fairly cheap and fairly simple once you get going. Another real top tip with these is the actual connectors. Um, if you start to look at the connectors, and I'll just, just drag a rather messy box across to show you what it means. If you look inside the connectors, you'll have a different array of types of connectors. So we've got the we've got the one pins, we've got the three pins for the servos, and then we go up to kind of the um, five by fives, which are, which are 10 pin connectors. So you buy a box like this, you crimp a few cables, you get good at it, you carry on. And what you end up doing really is running down the servo connectors because you use these quite often. You might run down on the single connectors because these are the ones that you use to connect to Arduinos. And then you end up with those two missing 
and then you end up you still got quite a lot of these connectors so what most people do is they'll then go and buy another box of this and then they'll, they'll or, or they'll use the wrong size connector top tip is jump onto ebay on ebay you'll find bags of these connectors and whatever size and shape that you want so the ones that you use the most of just buy yourself a bag of two or three hundred they are incredibly cheap i'm talking you know a couple of pounds for a couple of hundred um and split these out into your boxes as you go through and then what you can do is you're just using these connectors and you can carry on with the plastic ones so don't just assume that this is a set they don't tend to send the loot sell the loose ones as much on things like amazon but on ebay i found them all over the place another little handy tip uh, on actually doing these so really get used to that um once you've actually managed to do it and i'll kind of show you a little bit of uh, where we are with, with with the chopper dome that we're doing is you can start to put you can start to route your cables um you can start to put connectors on cables uh you can you can do custom length cables for all of the lights sorry the cabling's a little bit messy um you know you can put connectors on there where you've run where you've run short on it and what that means is that the, the, in this case the, there's a wire loom that goes all the way around the outside that's pretty much fixed into here uh, and all i've got to do then is if i've got a faulty servo i want to do any servicing on it i can just disconnect um, a single connector there uh, and replace individual servos so really useful skill highly recommend it